Hey everybody, I figured I'd do a quick video showing what a disaster my work area is right now. I mean, I got crap all freaking over the place. It is a, just a complete mess. And the reason why is I recently picked up this awesome workbench here, which I have been um, putting back together, and I'm going to show that in a second. But that led to... This is just like a unfinished area of my basement that I'm kind of, I kind of spruced up. So since I got this workbench, I put in some drywall. I'm not going to mud it or anything like that. And then I also ran an outlet there as well. So picking up one thing created a whole bunch of disaster. I had to move all types of crap out all over the place. Um, just everything's all over the place. Yeah. Monitors all over. And, you know, just crap just everywhere <laughs> from project stuff. So anyway, I figured I would just show this real quick um, and then hopefully get this cleaned up. And the other thing is I love Amazon. I needed, this is the uh, leg levelers that came with this. Um, I picked this up from somebody who was, I guess, um, a, a data center or something like that that was uh, closing up or something. And Amazon overnight, one day shipping, got replacement leg levelers. Not exactly the same, but hopefully they'll work. Um, and then I also cleaned everything. Uh, what else did I do? I got, you know, my goof off, got most of all the marks off and everything. And everything's down here. So I'm going to put this back together and hopefully, you guys, show you my new workspace area. All right, I guess I kind of lied because it's not gonna be a quick video, but I did get things cleaned up a little bit. And actually, what better site is it than uh, lit up working games, right? I got my Galaxian and my little Nintendo Row there with uh, Mario Brothers on the other side. But anyway, got um, finished cleaning up in here somewhat and it looks a lot better. And even better than the workbench is I was able to actually get um, my Commodore 64 a place to get set up at. So I got that set up because I was able to move the monitors and stuff over to my workbench area. Which is already cluttered with a lot of crap. But the reason why this video is going to be longer is that I needed to break up the missile command video I was working on. And we're going to do some... Uh, signature analysis and I'm going to go back in time um, to some previous footage of me doing some signature analysis where basically I had screwed up I don't think I show it to you but I had screwed up um, one of these buffer chips on the address line but I go through signature analysis on the um, address lines um, and it's still in the same state that I was in in the previous video which is a bad map um, error but I did want to come back and actually do some signature analysis on these ROMs that I suspected were bad. And I figured um, I would do probably just signature analysis on one ROM, show you how to do it, and then put the bad ROM in there and see what it looks like. Alright, so I did hook up my signature analyzer. Um, it's been a, at least a day because I've been really trying to research how to use this thing. Anyway, I did pull this RAM and tested it in my NeoLock Inquisitor, which is right there, and it tests out fine. Um, then I started, I hooked up the signature analyzer and started trying to figure out um, for the first time how to use this thing. And I'm not, you know, not for the first time because I did do some Z80 signature analysis, but I'm trying to truly understand what the heck I'm doing. Um, and I'm still not there yet. But anyway, uh, basically, um, and I'm not going to cover like what the signature analyzer does. I might try to go back as I learn more and do a basics. But what we we did is we use a no operation adapter. From um, I got this from Vector Collector. I also made my own. Um, actually filled a previous video that I think is terrible, so I'm probably not going to um, publish it. But anyway, this no operation adapter um, creates an instruction set by tying some of the data lines um, high and some other ones to ground. Um, that basically turns this processor into a 16-bit counter so we can go through and 
address on the address lines all 65,300 whatever um, addresses um, or mem pieces of uh, address all the memory space I should say um, it might be the more accurate way to say it so anyway it's constantly doing that and we set up our our clock start and stop to basically configure a window of time when we can capture the data on this address lines and it compresses it and then reads it out into a signature that's kind of the short and dirty the good thing about it, it is it's consistent so it's constantly running through the user address lines and if if we want to man ugh, if we want to measure the address lines we can start right at the cpu and get signatures for each of the um address lines on the cpu and then we can go to the address buffers um, or drivers or whatever you want to call them like these ls244s and we can measure the signature there and verify that you know there's good continuity that we're you know there's not a broken trace um, between the cpu and the the uh, buffer and then we can measure on the output side of the buffer and verify that the signature signature is accurate as well um, the reason it's been taking me a while is because there's other uh, uh, there's people that have published certain signatures and that and um, there is no for missile command there's no Atari based um, list of signatures like they have for centipede and and uh, asteroids deluxe and tempest and stuff like that so we kind of have to go off of the community who created some signatures and then I had to wanted to go back through and verify what what I was seeing and in the setup and stuff and then I created this little document here where I put the signatures on the um, address lines like you would see in an Atari schematic all right um, so anyway that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and quickly just check some address lines and we could just jump right to the buffers if we wanted to jump right to the outputs if we wanted to because I'm already there um, but I might show you just at least one going through from the processor to the input to the output um, like that. So let me get it on the tripod and show that real quick. All right, hopefully you can see this and I'm able to do this um, pretty decently. Can you see even that screen there? Eh, not very well, but whatever. All right, so I'm going to take my probe and we're going to go to uh, VCC, so 5 volts, and verify. Actually, do I have CAT signatures on? No, I have my standard signatures. Um, so we're going to go to VCC, test get you 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 we see our gate flashing that means our clock start and stop and is all good and our signature analyzer is able to you know capture a signature now what we want to do is let's go to let's just check address line zero first um, that's pin nine on the CPU um, so if we come to pin nine one two three four five six seven nine we get you 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 which is accurate that's what we should get and that's standard for any 6502 no operation adapter using a signature 2 or an hp am i recording yeah um using a signature analyzer like the sig 2 here or um an hp 5004 if we wanted to switch to our cat signature we also get you 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 that's an you know that's one of the interesting things but as you go up into the address lines you get something different like we should we, in a cat for address line one for a cat box signature we would get five 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 if we switch it to standard signatures we would get um fff um, which would be nor for a normal no operation adapter on on this anyway I'll do a separate video to detail that. We're just going to use standard signatures because that's what was documented um, in here as well. Um, so we go from pin 9 on the the CPU to pin 8 on A1B1. A1B1, which is over here. Pin 8 um, should, be, should be the same UUU signature. So this should be pin 8. And we have UUU there, which we know is good. Um, and then the output of that is pin 12. And this, so this is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we should see UUU there as well. And we do. And I don't know if you how well you're going to be able to see this, but there it is. So we know 
that we have good these, this buffer at least that line is good and then we'll go through and check check all of them and we could just check the output so we could go from you know pin 12 should be UUU, pin 14, FFF, pin 16, 84, 84, which is correct. P7, 6, uh, P7, 63, which is pin 18. Those are the outputs there. And then on the other side, pin 3, 6F, 9A, that's accurate. Pin 5. U759, that's accurate. Pin 7, 0356, which is good. Um, and then pin 9, I think. 1U5P. So we know that pretty much this buffer, we this buffer is working correctly. Like the CPU can get, um, you know, our expected readings are, are what we expect based off of the no op. Um, instruction set. So we're basically cutting off the data lines on, with the no-op um, and letting the CPU do basically free run. So it's just running a, the same instruction set, which is no operation. It's like a 16-bit counter. So it's going like from address line 0 is a 1 and then turns that and then goes to address line 2 and then that's a 1 and then it goes to the next one so on and so forth and it goes all the way through the 16 I guess I I need to draw, try to draw that up so it makes more sense to me too but actually I might put it on the scope I don't know if I'll do it in this video but I did mess with it in the scope and it becomes a little bit uh, more obvious I guess what it's doing but um, alright so now let's go to the other address buffer here which is F2 and I actually know this is messed up because I'm probably the one that screwed it up but this is where where I need to get to to get caught up. Um, address line 18, 18 should be 002, which is right. Um, that's coming from address line 15 or pin 25 from the CPU all the way to the input side of the buffer. Um, and I'm reading the output side right here. 002, pin 16. 9UP1, um, pin 5, which is address line 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, we got a problem, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all right, pin 5, which is address line 13, is obviously, does not have a stable signature, um, which is bad and it's invalid, right? So whether I change the clock. Yeah, so that's not good. So the input side of pin of address line um, 13, five is pin 15 on this side. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong damn one. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's even worse. So I was on the wrong chip, actually. <laughs> this is F2 right here. Um, I'm actually getting the... I'm not getting anything. It's reading 000, which is ground. So that buffer is... Looks like, the, you know, that output is bad. The input of that is pin 15. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And we get 4868 which is correct. So the input's good and the output's bad. And that's on address line 13. Um, if we look at address line 12, which is pin 3, is the output. Oh, wrong one again. Pin 3. That one's grounded as well. So that's bad. So right now we know that this buffer is bad. Um, the input from 3 is pin 17. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 4 FCA, which is correct. That's what we should see for address line 12 on any 6502. Um, it doesn't matter. It's not specific to missile command or anything. Any 6502, you're going to see that signature on that um, address line. So anyway, I need to stop here and replace this 
um, LS 74 244, right? 74 LS 244. Got to replace that. And that's been seven minutes of me talking. Um, and then we're going to go to the to the next circuit once I verify that I can get my address um, address you know data I guess um, you know past this buffer then we'll go into the decoder uh, the address decoder and uh, try to verify if that's correct because even though I know this RAM's good but we got some w wacky stuff going on and it has to be because. Um, we're not able to either read, get the address lines correctly, the instruction set to the ROMs correctly, um, or to in and out of RAM correctly. Like something's going on. We're not either either able to address the RAM correctly or address the ROMs correctly. I don't know which ones, but we know that we're not able to do it correctly because this buffer is, is, is bad. So, all right. All right, I'm not sure... I'm not sure where I left off, but um, I did end up replacing this um, LS. Oh shit! Hopefully I didn't break anything. Um, LS uh, 244, and I bodged it up pretty good. I had to do some jumpers and stuff, but um, one of the things is we weren't getting a signature on output three and or pin three, which is the output of. Uh, address line 12 and it should be 4 FCA um, <clears throat> based off the way I have uh, it set up and that matches whatever address line 12 would be over here on the CPU which is one of these there you go pin uh, 21 I think yep pin Am I right? Now, now I'm trying to find it over here. Let's see. It is pin 22. 21, 22. Yeah, pin 22. Um, address line 12, and now it's good. Actually, I checked all my outputs, and, and they're all good. Um, I did find out some interesting things, too, but about, I think, the diagram, or, I mean, the drawing... Um, is bad because as I was oming this out I actually had to I found um, some address lines that went to places that the drawings doesn't say they go to but anyway we replaced our buffer our buffer is now working correctly now I'm going to work up the chain a little bit um, and go to the address uh, decoders I guess um, which is uh, and the program select program memory select lines and stuff like that. I don't know if you can see that, but I printed this out and I'm going to probe those and compare those to what this other gentleman measured um, and go from there. And I'll come back and show you when I find something interesting. Okay, so I think it's Bud Jones or something on, on KLOV who, who published these. Um, and he does have some of the program select lines with a signature. Um, so I set up, I set up mine to be, oh crap, it just fell off. These grabbers aren't the greatest. Alright, but anyway, I set mine up to, um, to be the same with the stop on the falling edge there. Or whatever I think I, that's what I'm going to call it anyway. Um, all right, so he, he has some signatures there. Sorry, I'm rambling on, um, but I got to zoom in on this a little bit. And these are where, from an address decoder standpoint, there's N2 because I'm not going to be able to show you this while I'm taking the signatures. There's program select zero, one, and two, um, and this is where he has signatures. I have those circled. I've already verified the address lines the BA-14, 13, 12. I also verified um, BA-11 at K7, pin 5, and also at um, R5, pin 9. That, that looks good. And then you can obviously take signatures on the output because these are, well, that's an inverter, I guess. Um, so it should just be opposite. 
and but I'm not able to get a, a, a ugh, stable stable signature can't think a stable signature on these program select lines and it and it comes back to this pin 12 here um, where I'm not able to get a stable signature there either and I don't know if I should according to him I should have a stable signature on the program select lines which means that something has to be stable probably on this side as well I would think um, but I'm going to measure those real quick while we're here so we're going to look at um, pin into pin 7 into pin 7 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 so that's 8 so this would be 7 right here and you can see I'm not getting a stable signature on pin 7 or pin 6 or pin 9 which would be over here and then um, 10, 11, 12 is where I'm jacked up as well, which is on the input side of this decoder. So I don't necessarily know, think that the coder, I'm going to have to go back to the um, something else, I guess. That's, let's see, that's pin 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 is, matches address line. 14 that matches address line 13 and that matches address line uh, 12 especially if I actually put my signature 2 on all rising edge they would all match alright so anyway the issue is um, going I think, and this is what the signature analysis is leading me to believe, is that we got something going on on the multiplexed address selector, MAD, MAD select, something. Um, I've already checked J9, which is just a simple inverter, and that, that looks good. I mean, I have a zero on one side and a one on the other, or one on this side and a zero on the other side, and I see the same thing on pin 12 of, of R5. So it's pin 13. If I look at pin 13 of R5, right? Yeah, pin 13 of R5. So I don't know if you can see is way over here. I'm getting random. It's not stable. I don't know if it's supposed to be stable or not, but it's definitely not stable. So either R5 could be bad or something behind R5. The output is pin 11. Um, that's what, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, yeah. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, no. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, that's not right. 8, 9, 9, 10, 11, that's 11. 12, 13, 14. Alright, so that's 8, 9, 10, 11 is the output. 12 is low because that's that's right. And 13 is the in, is the other input from the multiplex address select or whatever, and that's random. So I don't know. Either R5 is bad, or we gotta trace it back a little bit more. All right, I think I understand it a little bit. Um, maybe not really, but um, as I was looking at this and thinking about this uh, multiplex address selector line and tracing it back into the schematic where it comes from it's generated from a clock signal and um, 
you know, the no operation adapter causes these address lines to be consistent, but this isn't going to be consistent. There's no address line feeding this. Um, so then I went and looked at like a set of centipede schematic and they do, um, they don't have these same terminologies here, but they do mention having to ground one of the inputs on a similar type of, um, decoder or something like that. So what I did is I grounded address line 12 and then I was able to get um, signatures for these select lines. Um, so I'm not going to actually show me doing it, but I grounded pin 12 and then I'm able to get signatures for these. I think Spud Jones, he only had on his sheet here, he only had um, a signature for program select two and I think zero, not not. Um, program select one. So I'm just going to record. I'm going to take a, a measurements and record what I find and then write them down um, in my little schematic here and then I'll hopefully be able to update this. So anyway, I, I think we're, I'm just going to keep going through the address decoders and seeing if I find any, any chips bad because I know, um, I don't know what's going on. So <laughs> that's where I'm at. Okay. If I um, do this right and edit the video correctly we are back to the present and I still have that bad map situation and I have my replacement ROMs in there but what I figured we'd do is just a let's power it on real quick and show you what we're getting in test mode so you see that it's the same stuff that we were getting last time basically bad map but we know it's not in reset and it's working. So I'm going to replace R1 and then LM1 and boot it up with R1 replaced to see if this ROM's bad or this one's bad. Both of them tested um, bad in my, or I couldn't read them in my Advin device programmer. Um, so, and I think, you know, they are corroded on the inside. Even though I clean up the outside of the legs, the insides are still, you know, pretty bad. And if you haven't checked out Arcade Doc's channel, I would re recommend it. I, d I have used um, Tarnex before, but I didn't use it on these yet. So I'm not giving up on these ROMs yet. But let's go ahead and put it in because I'm just curious to see what it will do. Okay, I put the original R1 in there. And it looks fine. So let's go ahead and do um, M1. Well, I replaced M1, and it also it still says ROM OK and RAM OK there. I know you can't really see it, but it is not showing the behavior it was before. Still showing the crazy, you know, craziness that I've gotten to in the past, but now I... Are these ROMs good or bad? Which is weird. So maybe those ROMs weren't what's ca was causing the reset when I initially started the previous video. Video 1, this thing was in reset all the time. Yeah, you can see the game trying to run. It's just not, it's not great, and it's only black and white right now. So, something is not right. Anyway, we're going to do the signature analysis on the ROMs, and then... I still I might go back and show you what these read in the in my advent, which is really weird. Like one of them, I couldn't even read it in the TL eight six six, but it's probably because the pins are so corroded on the inside, <clears throat> on the uh, you know not on the flat side, but basically on the in inner side, I guess, or whatever. I don't know how to describe it, but where a zip socket, a zero insertion force socket, is making contact like on the, the back side and the front side of the pins over here instead of these kinds of sockets which would make contact on the sides. I don't know. Something Something's whacked out and uh, they probably still need to be tar next, I guess. But let's break out the signature analyzer and hook this up and do some ROM readings. Okay, so I cleaned I cleaned these chips up with uh, tar next, the the two that I had marked bad. And they definitely look a lot better now. But if I put them in my system here, 
and I have the continuity check disabled load from device buffer edit I see things in the buffer but if I let me just clear this if I enable the continuity check and then let me just say load from device to zero it out and then put a chip in I'll put the same chip in you can see it says it seems to be empty Okay, now my buffer's all F's. Configure. If I disable the continuity check, buffer, load from device. Now I have things in my buffer, and I actually verified these on the on the Rob ROM ident. Um, website so I don't know why the, these chips are failing the continuity test this chip right here I didn't even put in Tarnix I just cleaned it up a little bit but it's still you can see has tarnished pins on the under, underside like that and it reads it reads this one fine which is just weird Yeah, you can see. I mean, what's going on with these two chips? They work fine in the board. I clean them up. I can read them with other programmers. I can even read them with my Advin if I disable the continuity check, um, which is checking um, connectivity from the programmer to the pins themselves. It doesn't make sense to me why, why these two are failing that continuity check. I don't know if that means that something's wrong with them maybe that it's wrong with one of the pins that it's not needed to actually read the ROM I don't know it's interesting all right okay as I I guess promised or whatever I have the no op adapter plugged in and I have some my ROMs um, populated again unfortunately there are no ROM signatures um, for missile command and the Spud Jones um, document, he didn't have it either. But I figured at least I would show um, taking signatures from, from a ROM and then I'll record them. I made this little spreadsheet right here um, where you have the, the 2716 address pinout over this side. And what we're going to do is we're going to put... Well, first off, you can check the address lines... Um, to make sure the address lines are good, the, as I stated earlier, um, you know the, the the signatures for a 6502 no op are going to be the same on the address lines all the way through um, wherever it terminates. You know, unless it's getting like inverted or or something like that. But um, you should see like on address line eight seven seven nine one as a standard signature and 6321 and I'm going to keep my start stop and clock all on the negative or falling edge um, as you can see right there so I'll just do this one right here which is ROM R was that H H so I'll come to pin that's 6 F 9 A is that address 7 now I need now I need my <laughs> my thing. All right, let's see here. Yes. Okay. Pin one is address seven. Pin two is address six, and so so on. So actually, let me do it this way. 
So we're going to go to pin 1, and that's good, 6F9A, which is what we see there, pin sub, address line 7, U759, which is address line 6, this should be 50356, which is correct. And I'm just going to double check because I could have swore six. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, that's pin one, pin two. And so I'm not going to do all of them, um, but you get the idea. You can verify basically that your address lines are good all the way to the ROM chip with uh, signature analysis. P763. And we're just making sure that like none of them are you know grounded or anything like that or changing. FFF, which is address line one. Yep, and then address line zero. I just said I'm not going to do all of them, but here I'm doing all of them. UUU is address line zero, as you see there. So the address lines are good to the ROMs, but to actually do a ROM signature, we're going to keep our clock on the you know falling edge. But we need to move our start and stop to, I think, the output enable pin, pin 20. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So let me pause. I'm going to move my start and stop to the output enable of each ROM chip. And then because the address lines are cycling through on that output for, for each data output, um, which is... For each data output of the ROM, you can see here like Q0, pin 9, pin 10, pin 11, we're going to get a signature and it's basically going to be a representative of um, all the data that's able to come out on that output um, that's stored in, in the ROM memory, I guess. Anyway, per pretty bad explanation, but that's what we're going to do. Let me pause real quick. Okay, so I got... Um, pin 20 hooked up to my start and stop and I have um, let's see here stop on the rising edge and start on the falling edge and just like in centipede where it says you might need to ground something to get a stable signature on the ROMs and I think I showed this earlier in the video this uh, multiplexed address select um, whatever coming in here is what generates sorry for the shadow is what generates the uh, program select and those program select generate the ROM um, ROM 0 actually all the ROMs doesn't it yeah ROM 0 1 2 3 4 5 all the way depending on how you have the board bootstrap but those program select um, is what enables the address decoders so you got to stabilize those those aren't going to be stable unless the um, multiplexed address select is stable um, so you can get a stable you know cycle basically on those program selects anyway now that I did that and I you know Atari didn't do this so I'm assuming this is correct but who knows I'm gonna um, probe the CU22 that is for data line data 2 on this ROM H. That's right. And then data line 1, see if we can get a stable signature. And then data line 0. And if I come to the other side, what we got? In 12, 13, 12, 13 right here, 2, 1, UP, then P9, UA, F, but the problem is I don't have anything to compare it to, but um, I'm going to go ahead and write all, I'll take the measurements and write all of them down for all the ROMs um, based off of this procedure, so that way if somebody else wants to do it, I guess they can, but it is it is kind of a super pain in the ass. <laughs> so, but um, I'll go ahead and do it and then come back. But that's what you got to do. You got to ground that um, multiplexed address 
select line, um, which will stabilize the program, so, um, the ROM uh, enable pin, which is what? Uh, output enable. No, it must be, I don't know what, how that gets there. Anyway, I have to look that up. Um, but anyway, I think I'm doing it right. Even though I don't fully understand why. <laughs> so, but yeah, this is a pain in the butt and I need more light in this thing. Oh, interesting. Why do I get the same signature on both ROMs? On both data lines there. That's weird. So maybe this isn't doing it right. I don't think I should be getting the same signature when I'm probing different ROMs. Okay, on that one I'm not. Interesting. Hmm. That one I'm getting CU22. Alright, so I have to think about this. This probably isn't the right way to do it. Alright, duh, I'm an I'm an idiot. I need to change my if I'm gonna test a different ROM, I gotta put my start and stop on that chips enabled um, to get different data, which I do. So yeah, this is the correct way to do it. You just have to change, you know, from here. If I want to test like maybe R1, let's see, one. One, two, three, four, uh, it's, uh, 24, 23, 22, 23, 22, 20 right there. And then we can check, sorry for the shadow, I'm in my new work area, I gotta get some better light. And yeah, we get different signatures on the output, which makes sense. So yeah, I can. This is, I think, the right way to do it, and I'm um, I'm able to get stable signatures and everything on all the ROMs. So I'll record this. Um, I think the only one that's different. This is the latest. This is like ver version three. All of these are version two, except for one ROM is version three. I don't know if it's. It's got to be one of these probably, K or J. I'm not sure, but. Um, and I'll record that information and put it on my my sheet right here. All right, damn shadow, whatever. Um, so I did do recorded all the signatures on the output lines of all the ROMs, and KL1 is the only one that um, changes in Missile Command Rev three, and I had Missile Command Rev two in there. So I went ahead and burnt a ROM, and let's see here. I went ahead and burnt a ROM, and I'm going to measure um, that as well. So be right back, I think. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I, I had to mess with it to get the, my gate working. But um, so let's see, for address line, we're looking for address line, no, data output, um, pin 11 data output um, db I guess or whatever zero or d zero d shit d2 d2 should be 8 f h2 on the old rom and on the new rom is 4 p26 so we're definitely getting it's definitely different based off of the data that's in the chip so I'm going to record that and then um, be right back. Okay, I'm wrapping up this video and um, I did have to kind of split it up because I was j learning a little bit about the signature analysis in video one, but it actually, you know, was sidetracking me and shit. So I decided to do something different. Actually, when I was messing with the signature analysis, I actually blew out this buffer chip, which I showed. Um, how we determined that it was messed up and fixed it um, in this video, but that was not part of the original problem. That was just me being sloppy and um, having my probe, you know, hit something that it shouldn't have <clears throat> um, on that buffer chip. So I ended up having to replace that. But basically, the board's all back together. I do have a new version ROM in here, version three at um, 
KL1, but we're still at the same situation. Um, in test mode, it, it looks jacked up. It's, it says bad map. If I unground the test mode, we get the, our little craziness that we have there. And I don't think I'm going to be able to figure this out using the signature analysis. Um, I don't think it, I think it has to, it's got to be something with memory or I don't know. I have to dig into the schematic and guess some more, I guess, or something. But the other thing is, is even though you can read, uh, do signature analysis on the ROMs and I, you know, kind of figured out how to do it. I don't know why anybody would, because it's just so much easier just to take these out and put them into a um, device programmer and verify them on Rob, Rob Identifier, Rob Ident, um, which is a great website, by the way. So anyway, um, Vector Collector, thanks for putting these out there, these no-op adapters. Um, it, hopefully it will come in handy eventually, and I think the signature analysis is good for kind of verifying your address lines and seeing if you have any breaks and stuff, especially if you don't have a fluke, like I, I don't have a fluke right now. Um, but verifying ROMs, just that seems dumb to use signature analysis, I think. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe somebody will comment and say why it's good or not. So, But I did record these, and I'll post these on a thread in Cloud as well. So, All right, that's it for this video. And in part three... I am hopefully going to have this thing fixed, but um, it might be a while before that comes out because I am definitely still stumped on what's going on with the board. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. This was kind of a learning journey for me, and I am no expert. This is my disclosure. I should put it on every video. This is just me screwing around and kind of learning as I go. So hopefully, um, you know, I enjoy it because it makes me learn. So if it, somebody else benefits, that's cool too. Cheers.